Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. If you want to be a pro just like all the people in these stories, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And our first story of the day is by Eagle Eye 295 revenge for doing all the work. This is an old story, I was like 12 years old and I loved creating games. Nothing impressive, things like Breakout, Pac-Man, the best game I made was a simple Pong with abilities in an impossible mode, but I loved sharing it with my friends. So on to the story. I was 12 and the teacher Stefan divided us in groups of four for a group's project. I was paired with Hans, Karen, and Anna, a friend. Hans and Karen were brother and sister. However, me and Anna soon discovered that Karen and Hans were not going to help. They didn't respond to text or to messages through MSN, and in class they talked about their new toys or the Pokemon they just caught on their Game Boy. I had Pokemon Blue and I loved that game. They eventually said, just send us the text that we have to say during the presentation. Hindsight being what it is, I did wait too long to complain to the teacher. I waited two weeks to talk to Mr. Stefan. Me and Anna both complained that Hans and Karen weren't doing anything and that we'd like to present as a duo instead. Stefan, however, thought it was unfair to split the group up as the others would not have enough time to prepare their own presentation. So he told us that we would present with four and he would score accordingly. The week passes and the presentation was on Wednesday. We present our project and did pretty well. We gave them the simplest lines to say and that was that. On Friday, we receive our points. Points were given after every presentation was given. And strangely, me and Anna received a 7 out of 10, and Hans and Karen received an 8? Oh, did I mention that Mr. Stefan was good friends with both Hans and Karen's parents? When we asked for clarification, we got that Hans and Karen complained that we deliberately gave them the easy or less important parts to present, and because they worked equally on the project, they deserved a higher grade. This pissed me off. Immediately I thought of going and complaining, perhaps my parents would be able to do something, or should I go straight to the school director? But then a light popped off in my head. They loved my previous game, nothing much, just a maze game. And my next game was almost finished. Remember the Pong I talked about in the backstory? So I finished creating my game and created a separate game for Hans and Karen. In their games, I put an extra piece of code that simply created a file called stupidfile.txt in the wrap data folder. The file was one kilobyte big, but it kept being created so long as the game was running. So you would have stupidfile1.txt, stupidfile2.txt, etc. I didn't expect this, but the game was a hit. There was an impossible mode that I created where the NPC was always able to dodge abilities and hit the ball. It was meant as a joke, but my friends would time how long they were able to survive against impossible mode. This included Hans and Karen, who to be fair, were not bad at it. Now for the result everyone had been waiting for, we had to do a presentation about historic events outside Europe. To make it so there wouldn't be twice the same presentation, we could choose between several subjects given by the teacher. Not Mr. Stefan, he taught French. Hans chose the American Civil War, Karen the Russian Revolution, and I chose the Warring States period of Japan. Hans and Karen were however already complaining that their PC was getting slow and it was a new one. Strangely enough, their drive was getting full fast. Any guesses why? But we all started on our assignment. Time comes for the presentations and I see both Hans and Karen sweating bullets. The first day passes and the teacher calls out Hans and Karen to present. They try to get out of it as they wanted to present last, but the teacher wouldn't budge. I can't remember what he said, but this was a good representation of his presentation. The colonials in America were unhappy with Britain's rule and revolted. The Americans won. His presentation lasted for less than a minute. Surprised, the teacher asked if Hans did any work. Hans sheepishly confessed that because his drive was full that weekend, he accidentally deleted the folder containing his and Karen's presentation and research, so they had nothing. Unfortunately, they had already used a similar excuse to get extra time for a history task and promptly got a zero on their presentation. That, combined with the fact that they were already barely passing history, dropped their score to a 3 out of 10, failing them completely. Now about the Belgian school system. In Belgium, there's two mandatory schools. Elementary school from 6-year-olds to 12-year-olds, and high school from 12-year-olds to 18-year-olds. This was the first year of high school. 
We also have Divisions, ASO, which is more theory than practical. This was more a preparation for university. TSO, which is a balance between theory and practical, still with the eye on preparing for university. Lastly, we have BSO, which is more practical than theory. This was not in preparation for university, but more to directly start working. Because of the system in place when you failed an important class, you had to redo the whole year again or drop down. So now Hans and Karen had the choice to redo ASO 1 completely or continue in TSO 2. You like to see them get payback for their bad actions, but you also kind of hate to see them failing in their academics. If this happened to you, would you feel satisfied about the outcome or would it be kind of bittersweet? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Naughty Milk. Driver gets mad about traffic and gives me the finger. I was driving home from work on the freeway one late afternoon. Like a typical day in Los Angeles, there was a lot of traffic. I'm driving along and there's this minivan behind me that starts tailgating me. It's not like I can go any faster, so I ignore it. Then the car proceeds to start honking. Still nothing I can really do. The driver then cuts to the lane next to me, rolls down her window, starts yelling and gives me the middle finger. I usually ignore stuff like this, but I was pretty annoyed at this point, so I rolled down my window. I point at her tire while she's yelling at me and yell, You have a flat! She's still yelling at this point, so I say it again. She's shocked and proceeds to pull off to the side. I watch her in my rearview mirror from a distance as she gets out to inspect her perfectly fine tire. Bye bye! Honestly, kudos to OP for just shutting down the situation, giving something that just gets this Karen completely out of the picture. Knowing there's a lot of traffic and knowing that OP couldn't do anything, they're not gonna catch back up. Our next story is by Hawaii Brian. Air Force Captain attempts to publicly humiliate me. Some background info. When I was little, about a year old, I just started walking and had an accident where my mom accidentally spilled boiling water on me. She was cleaning the baby bottles and ended up burning my arm and part of my neck. My mother to this day will cry every time bringing up the story. For me, I was too young to remember, so it really doesn't bother me. 100% an accident, just should have been more aware of her surroundings and has been a very loving mother throughout my life. I was new to the Navy, just reaching my first duty station. Even though I was newly enlisted, I still had an extensive knowledge about the lifestyle as my dad served 21 years. In a group of about 30 to 35 joint service personnel, this Air Force captain comes up to me and starts yelling at me in front of everyone saying how I was out of regulations for having hickeys on my neck. Trying to make an example out of me of how this is unacceptable, in the military we have a phrase, praise in public, discipline in private. I simply replied with a stern voice, Ma'am, for a captain in the United States Air Force, I thought you would have a little more respect for someone who's been physically abused as a child. And I just went back to my computer and started working. As you can imagine, she was left there speechless as the whole office stared at her in disgust, as many of them knew that my scars were burns and not hickeys. I hope she learned her lesson and follows the praise in public, discipline in private motto. Yeah, so how about not just assuming some kind of marks on a person's body are from any kind of promiscuous behavior? It's probably just a solid rule to follow in general. And let's say somebody did actually have hickey marks. What does it matter? Son, you do know those hickey marks aren't regulation, right? Oh, I'm sorry, are there regulation hickey marks? What does it matter? It's just a bruise. Let alone the fact that in this situation it wasn't even the right assumption. This next story is by JFC, MFER, be an a-hole stepdad, lose your VCRs. My dad died when I was a baby, mom married stepdad at age 5, divorced age 16. He was always a huge jerk to me and my brothers. Never physically abusive, but verbally just a jerk to us and our friends. Loud, cursing, he was a racist. He also pulled in good money, so my mom was able to be a stay-at-home mom for most of my life, which was great. During divorce, when we were moving out of a million dollar house and into a three bedroom rental, we threw away the remote controls for everything, including two VCRs. They were high end VCRs that had no buttons, so they looked cool, I guess? So they were useless without the remotes. Then I forgot. Maybe 15 years later, my mom tells me about the last time she heard from him. 
He called her all drunk, alcoholic, and complained about her crappy kids stealing the remotes. It was so satisfying to hear that after forgetting I even did it for so many years. I thought at first when OP said, we threw away the remote controls, I thought they meant everybody including the stepdad. But at the end, knowing that OP and crew specifically chose to throw them away to screw over the stepdad, that makes the story a lot better especially for that era when VHS was just practically all you had. This next story is by Submarine Huya. Typical Karen story. During the super freeze of Houston, I, along with most Houstonians at the time, were out driving around looking for an open gas station for our generators and vehicles. People were just sleeping in their vehicles at the time, with most of the southeast Texas out of power. As I pulled into the HEB gas station on I-10 in Pin Oak, the Whataburger opened. I left for maybe 15 minutes to bring the gas home, and in that time, a line from heck emerged. I mean literally 300 yards-ish of cars. There's a front entrance, but it was clearly blocked by this long line of very hungry people. Now I've been waiting probably a good hour. It was chill, as everybody would rather be there than at their homes at the moment. So I pull up to that front entrance, about to be in the parking lot, and oh so close to ordering, when Karen with her F-350 pulls in and acts as if she's gonna cut off the 50 or so people stretched to the side highway. I roll my window down, clearly pointing out everyone behind me. She waves her hand like, sorry, I don't have a choice. So being the happy-natured man I am, I decide to pull off the line a little and basically bring our vehicles toe-to-toe. I dramatically put my car in park, motioned to the people behind me to basically touch my bumper, and waited. Now she can only go backwards back onto the highway, or by us and take the drive of shame past this whole line of cars, which never wilted in strength since I got into the line. This goes on for maybe three minutes, but now the whole line of people are laying on their horns too. You could feel the social pressure from all these people that this is more important than food and no one had a problem waiting till she left. Then right on time, another truck pulls in behind her, lays on his horn, and she finally flips me off, does a U-turn and goes on her way. Satisfying as heck. I don't care if it's in person, if it's cars, nobody likes a person who skips in line. Especially not somebody who's like, oh I'm sorry I had no choice, I've got to. It's like, no, you've got to go to the back of the line. Nobody's going to be happy for you to roll up here in your F-350 and skip 50 people, Karen. This is what a burger during a power outage we're talking about. We ain't playing games around here. And our final story of the day is by Confident Bat 3849 Who zoomed who? Probably lame as far as revenge goes, but there's a high snark factor at play here. This is me and the State University switchboard operator on the phone, years ago. I say, good morning, could I please have Dr. ABCD's office number? Doctor had the last name of a common boy name. She, exasperated and condescending, says, and Dr. ABCD's last name would be... I say, that is his last name. Her, a little face palm and a giggle, says, oh, here you go. Wait for it. I knew she was the only operator when I called back. Yes, hello, could I please have the office number for Dr. Bob? Me being funny. She says, yes ma'am, do you have a first name? Her being hilarious. I love a quick wit. I laughed so hard that I traveled 70 miles to the university to have lunch with her. Well, I guess it just goes to show that you never know when you might call up a university and end up making best friends with the phone operator. Let's be real though, anybody that's really good at playing off your comedy It's like the best experience in the world. When you have your own jokes, whether you think they're lame or not, and that person just goes and builds and yes ands it and builds on top of it, you have a little back and forth. It's really like a magic moment. So I don't blame OP for traveling 70 miles to the university just to have lunch with them if they seem like somebody that's really compatible as a best friend. Life's too short to not make friends like that. If somebody can give you a lot of joy with just a little interaction like that, I think it's worth making sure that you explore it and find out if there's a friendship to be had from it. But between you and me, all of my best friends, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these pro-revenge stories that I've read today, which was your favorite and why? Let me know which one of these stories was your personal favorite in the comments down below. I'd love to know which one you thought was the best. 
And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.